Aboriginal people knew these fires were coming a long time ago. It's part of us is the air and the water and the earth. If you grow up with fire, you learn to respect it. Our ancestors have been practising fire law for thousands of years across this continent. If you don't look after the land, you get, you get these devastating fires, you lose all these species, and so we've got to go back to that cultural way of looking after the land if we want to survive. Events like this summer, I think, demonstrate that there's things more powerful than us, but we have an influence on them. We can't control the climate, but we're influencing it. When there's a lightning strike in the forest, you know, traditionally, lightning teaches us law, and so it's our ancestor for fire. If we use cultural fire, knowledge and practice, we can help bring some of those plants and animals back. We can help heal some of those relationships between people and country. teaches us that all. Well, when you burn country, there's winners and losers. The land has its own culture, its own identity, and that's culturally where we form our identity from. We learn from the land and the land reciprocates, it feeds us, it shelters us. And so that's the knowledge that we need all people to understand. Everybody in the world goes back to a First Nations connection to the land. The land will always be here. People want to save the world, or the world will always be here. It's just what's in the world, um, what matters to people, that's what changes. You know, we're talking about thousands, hundreds of thousands of years of cultural practice and identity and connection. The last 200 years have been devastating for us, but what is the next 200 years going to look like?